Shadow of Truth, and today is Monday, December the 5th, 2016, and your hosts are Rory Hall from thedailycoin.org and Dave Kranzler from investmentresearchdynamics.com. What's going on, Dave? Well, another day, another another manipulated market day. Oh, so it's just another day that ends in Y. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, let's dive in and see if we can't pick some of it apart. That sounds good to me. I exchanged emails with uh, John Embry this morning. And um, it's funny because, you know, again, I didn't think there would really be much I didn't think that the Italian referendum thing was, was going, I really didn't think it'd have much bearing on the markets. I mean, and I didn't even really pay that much attention to it, but when the futures opened up after, after the uh, referendum lost, um, gold actually spiked up about 10 bucks from Friday's close and the S and P was down 10. And I don't know if that was just, you know, algo, the algo, hedge fund algos or what it was. I mean, um, and then by the time I went to bed, they had gold red and they had the S&Ps were almost flat. And then obviously by the time I wake up, the S&Ps are up eight, the futures. And then when the market opens, they're up 15 and gold is slammed. And uh, I just saw a post on zero hedge. And I got to always check Zero Hedge's numbers because I sometimes when I actually do the numbers myself, I come up with a different number than they came up with. But, um, you know, they're saying about three and a half billion dollars worth of paper futures were dumped onto the COMEX. And that would have been the the hit that occurred um, just after the COMEX floor opened. Um, when the COMEX floor opened, the gold futures were at 11.68, and they got it down as as low as uh, uh, 11.61. So, um, they recovered again. I, you know, there's so much there's so much physical offtake going on in the East right now mm-hmm. between India and China, and even Vietnam, which is a they're they're one of the top five or six importers of gold in the world. People don't know that, but the premium last night was 120 bucks over spot and that when the premium is anywhere over 30 or 40 dollars in Vietnam it means there's a lot of gold going into Vietnam there's a lot of demand for it so um, you know clearly there's there's just this continued divergence between the the what's going on in the in the physical the physical delivery world and the paper phony world yep. so um, but anyway just to circle back um, Embry had his his thinking was well. First of all, he said he said a nuclear war could break out and the stock market would be up sharply and gold and silver would fall precipitously. And it's funny because I I made that comment back in two thousand three. I said you know a, a nuclear bomb could go off in Times Square and the Dow would go up two hundred points <laughs> and they would hit gold. <laughs> Hmm? Yeah. Oh, well, that's a good thing. You know, the Italian banking system's collapsing. So, yeah, let's take the Dow up 100 points. Um, and he said he just he, he said he thinks things must be really bad behind the scenes in terms of, you know, the degree to which they're manip- trying to manipulate stocks higher and, and the precious metals lower. And I, that's about all you can say, say at this point about this. It's all just a sham. Oh, it totally is. I mean, you know, the whole thing's a sham. It's between uh, uh, paper pushers and the physical buyers. It's demonstrated on did the, did the system collapse.com. And you can go and see live action between the paper market and the physical market. It's just a chart and it shows the arbitrage, the premium, backwardation, whatever you want to call it, between the West and the East. And right now, as we're, as I'm speaking, the price is $30.85 higher on the Shanghai Gold Exchange for gold and $1.58 
per ounce higher on silver. So it's almost a 10% difference on silver on the Shanghai go on the Shanghai exchange. If it's, I haven't seen the number for last night. Um, I don't it, know where they're getting 35 from. And maybe that's the number that was last night. I just, no, I, this is I, live. I, this is right now. Yeah, no, I hear you. Well, I, you know, again, I, when I get Brimlow's report, I can confirm that number, but let's just say it's $30. So it'd be a little under 3%. Okay. 3%. 3% difference. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, 30 over, let's just call it 1162. Yep. It's two and a half percent. Yep. And it's already up. It was, it was up before, before we got on the phone, Dave, it was, it was over $33. Yeah, I mean it's incredible the difference. If you're not familiar with that site, you really should check. Yeah, I added it several weeks ago. Yeah, so it's um, worth having. I mean, it's worth checking out. Yeah, I don't know. I hear you. Well, again, I I get Brimlow's report, and that that gives me you know a ton of information that isn't generally widely disseminated. So. Yes. Um, and I, you know, I don't need to see what the premium is in Shanghai at every minute. You know, I, I know that there's massive physical offtake going on in China and in India right now. Yeah. And, um, the, the, um, local Vietnam gold on Monday stood at a premium of 12192 to world gold. Jeez. And that That's was incredible. gold at 1177. So. Um, and that, that tells us that there's a massive amount of physical offtake going on in Vietnam right now. So, um, there's clearly a big divergence between, um, the physical market and the paper market. Yes. Well, in the physical market, I don't know if you saw this or not, but I was out skipping around this morning and ran across some information regarding, uh, some policy changes in South Africa regarding their mining sector and i wrote a just a short uh summary of what's going on and they are going to the government of south africa is going to force the mining company the requiring boards of directors for mining companies to be 50 percent black persons and senior management to be 60 percent black not racist, not a racist comment, just a comment. It's telling the, it's dictating the mining companies who's going to be on their board of directors and who's going to be in their senior management. That's, that's a backdoor nationalization, in my opinion. I mean, because if you're not allowed to run your company the way that you want to, and there are dictates from the government that say this is how your company is going to operate and you have to hire these people then what's the difference between nationalization and, and that or it or am i just out of my mind well i don't know that it's necessarily nationalization per se but um it's certainly a move to toward totalitarianism and um, one of my subscribers sent me an email, you know, about the, I guess you saw that the woman who runs the Naked Capitalism website, um, it has threatened the Washington Post with a defamation lawsuit for, for putting her website on the fake news <laughs> list. Wow. And, um, and she's demanded a retraction of that. And the guy's comment to me was, well, why don't, why don't all of you guys who were, who were classified as fake news purveyors, why don't you form together and, and fight this legally? Dave Hodges is doing that. Well, and here's what my comment was, unfortunately. Um, I just said, we're in, the, we're in the latter stages of Atlas Shrugged. And if you're not part of the insider government elitist circle, there is no rule of law. And I said, if, if Eve takes up a collection to help fund her fight, I'll gladly contribute. But I don't think fighting the trend is going to do anything other than pander to my ego. Um, and I said, 
there's a movement towards totalitarianism in this country that's been set in motion that can't be stopped until it blows itself up. And I referenced that bill being passed by the House. And if that, if that bill becomes law, it will remove any legal standing to file suits like the one that Eve is threatening with. Which so, means they're going to um, pass it. I'm sorry? Which means they will pass it. Right. And I just said if, if she's serious about filing a suit, she needs to file it before the Senate passes the legislation and before it's signed either by Obama or Trump, who I'm sure either one would sign it. So, um, because, you know, if she gets the, the lawsuit filed before that bill becomes law, then, then she'll have standing. But once that bill becomes law, there won't be any standing to file a defamation lawsuit like that. So again, it's, it's, you know, if, if you go and reread the last 25% of Atlas Shrugged, you'll see that what's, you know, basically you had a government that was telling people what to think, how to think and when to think. And that's where this government's headed, and that's that's part of that's part of why they're they're putting out such manipulated data reports. For instance, I I didn't even think about this, but when you look at um, the retail sales report and John Crudell of the New York Post, who we interviewed on the Shadow of Truth a couple of years ago, wrote an article about this. If you go to the backup data that goes into the headline number on the retail sales report. A lot of the a lot of the categories that go into making the headline number, when, when they break it down, they'll have an asterisk, which means there's no there were no numbers available for the advance estimate. So the Census Bureau just makes up the numbers <laughs> that go into that report. So they're not even remotely fraud. accurate. It's just a hundred percent fraud. It is fraud, but it's it's being done for the purposes of political propaganda. I mean, again, it's 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 this movement towards thought control that Orwell had written about and everyone poo pooed. But, you know, if if you're sitting there at home and you're being squeezed and you're having a hard time finding a job, but all of a sudden you see, oh, four point six on a employment report, maybe there's hope I can find a job. Well, guess what? You can't really find a job because that unemployment report number was that, that unemployment number was calculated because they removed almost half a million people from the labor force. <laughs> and actually, the number of people actually employed declined by about 250,000. And the way that John Williams calculates the unemployment number, and it, it goes, but he does it the way it was done before 1994 when the government reclassified um, discouraged workers. So that if you're not actively looking for a job in the last four weeks, when they when they call you and, and take your survey, they move you out of the out of the labor force. They just say, "Oh, out of the labor force doesn't, doesn't want a job." You know, it's doesn't not. Want a it's, job, it yeah. has nothing to do with the fact that you can't find a job, or you don't want to work two jobs as a waiter and a bartender. So, but the point here is, is that you know, you you sit at home and you're in despair and, and you can't find a job, and you see, oh, four point six percent unemployment, and the Dow keeps going higher. There must be something good going on, so I'm going to hold out hope, and that's that's what it's all about. Yeah. Or yeah. what's wrong with me? Why can't I find a Why can't I find a decent job? And why am I broke? Uh, you know. I mean, right. there's, there's that aspect of it, too. Must be my problem, not Must theirs. be my problem. What's wrong with me? Exactly. You know, everybody else has got a job. Why can't I find one? That's right. So, and it's, so it's, you know, it's, it's a big, it's a big propaganda thing going on. And, and the market manipulation is just another form of propaganda. I mean, it, it's, it, it's, it really is 1984, Brave New World and Atlas Shrug unfolding before our eyes. Yes. I mean, that's it, right. it's incredible. And that's right. And, and it gets worse every week. All the time. I mean, there was a report over the weekend that Obama's, you know, going to start up some kind of news service or some kind of propaganda nonsense after he's out of office. I didn't even, I didn't bother reading it. I just saw a headline about it and it's just like, my God, how much worse can it get with this guy? <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, it's not enough that he legalized propaganda, you know, in 2012 or 2013. And, you know, now he's going to pro start producing it himself. And it's just, that's right. 
It's like, geez. Can't get away from it. No. And again, it's, it's, we're, we're in a, uh, we're in a, in a movement here. We're in a historical tidal wave movement that can't be stopped until it, it eventually blows itself up. And, you know, I think that kind of points back to Embry's email to me this morning where he said he, he's more worried about nuclear war breaking out than anything else. I mean, you know, now Trump is going at the Chinese and um, this is this is just going to get worse. It's just incredible. I mean, it, well, it's, it it's really terrifying. It That's the way I look at it. <laughs> Andy, I, I think that they're going to have to commit some kind of false flag, pretty a pretty major false flag here in the states in order to uh, drive people get people's full undivided attention off of what's going on because the the so-called fake news Russian propaganda that that we all uh, perpetuate is winning they know it they've got it they've got to get people away from it and it, it's just I mean, what are they going to, what can they do? Because every time that they open their mouth through any of these mainstream media channels, people are attacking it. People are questioning it. People are, are turning away from it. I mean, and in droves. And so how do they win them back? They scare them, they scare them out of their mind. And then at the same time, they pass this bill that you were talking about to where they can just shut everything down and say, nope, no more fake news, no more Russian propaganda. And that's, and then that's it. And they can do that, you know, and then you and I go underground and all of a sudden we have, you know, all of a sudden there are illegal or excuse me, quote, illegal, servers that are that, that start popping up and that and that the news starts getting out whereas you know 50 years ago or 40 years ago people were handing out you know printed leaflets you know little uh newsletters all over the place to get to get real information out now we'll have to develop a, a server and and start getting it out that way yeah i i don't know it's be interesting to see how all this unfolds but i will guarantee you that the way this is headed it's not going to be good for anyone who's not part of the elitist inner government circle and that's why you got all these billionaires gravitating towards power positions in dc because they want to have some sort of control over what's what's going down in this country. I hate them all. Yeah, I agree. Well, on that cheery note, Dave, what should we uh, should we turn our attention to something else, or try to liven things up a bit and let and get out of here? <laughs> well, you know the the college football playoff. Uh, a bracket has been set up, so that that's a good way to distract yourself. Yeah. Um, well, Alabama's you know, going to win, hey, so it doesn't matter. Them, if you can't beat them, join them. Go out and take out, get a big credit card, and go spend like crazy this holiday season. Because I guarantee you, most people are, who are spending like crazy this holiday season aren't going to be able to pay back their debt. So, you know, <laughs> why should you be the one who's responsible and pay for? everything with cash, you know, just do the same thing everyone else is doing. And a lot more people are going to start figuring that one out too. We can only hope. <laughs> well, and as far as the football, SEC, Alabama is going to win again. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I, you know what? I give Washington Huskies a puncher's chance. No, um, no chance. You know, I, I really <laughs> haven't taken a close look at them this season until they played CU on Saturday or Friday. They've got a really strong team, and I, at the very least, I'd probably, I'd probably take 
Washington and the 14 points in that game because they have an extremely physical team that probably most of the rest of the country isn't hasn't really paid attention to because no one pays attention to football teams west of the Mississippi. That's true. <laughs> so I think I think there could be a, a nice surprise there. I think it's going to be a better game than people think. I'm not saying Washington's necessarily going to win, but I think they. I give them a puncher's chance. Nah, they don't eat cornbread in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> There's no good barbecue and cornbread in Washington State, so forget it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, yeah, and actually, what they do do well, which is seafood. All that, all that fish they catch in the Pacific's infected with with radiation from Fukushima. Well, that means that they'll be glowing. So <laughs> <laughs> that's actually true, by the way. I mean, yes. when I go to a, a sushi restaurant or or I go to a place where they have oysters, I make sure they're everything comes from the East Coast, uh, which is which is good. Can't get it out of the Gulf. Don't get don't don't get it out of the Gulf. If it's not coming out of the Atlantic, and odds are it's that has certain trace amounts or elevated amounts of uh, cesium and plutonium uh, in it from Fukushima as well, but not as much because cesium has been showing up in Florida citrus. So that's not good. Yeah, well, I admit, I. You know, um, the shrimp I eat probably is coming from the Gulf, although it might come from farms on the in the Atlantic. But uh, right. it's a shame too because I like I like the um, Pacific, I like the Pacific Coast oysters. I think they're really good, but I just won't eat them. Don't eat them. It's a trap, Dave. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. On that happy note, I guess we'll get out of here and pick it up on Thursday and see where we stand. That sounds good. All right, buddy.